Welcome to this Lexio Divina journey of reading, meditating, and praying the Gospel for the third Sunday of Lent. We read God's Word to know that we're not alone, that God is with us, always with us, actively present in our lives and in our world today. During the season of Lent, we're invited to walk ever more closely with Jesus so that we might blossom and flourish in all that's good and beautiful in our humanity. Feel free to pause the podcast if ever you feel to dwell longer on any stage of the journey, picking it up again in your own time. We will take a moment now to quieten our minds and hearts, if needs be, so as to come into the presence of God's living word. God's gift to us, our food for the journey, and this third Sunday of Lent is John chapter 2, verses 13 to 25. Just before the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And in the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep and pigeons, and the money changers sitting at their counters there. Making a whip out of some cord, he drove them all out of the temple, cattle and sheep as well, scattered the money changers' coins, knocked their tables over, and he said to the pigeon sellers, Take all of this out of here and stop turning my father's house into a market. Then his disciples remembered the words of scripture, Zeal for your house will devour me. The Jews intervenes and said, What sign can you show us to justify what you've done? Jesus answered, Destroy this sanctuary, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews replied, It's taken 46 years to build this sanctuary. Are you going to raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the sanctuary that was his body. And when Jesus rose from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed in the scripture and the words he had said. During his stay in Jerusalem for the Passover, many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he gave. But Jesus knew them all, and he did not trust himself to them. He never needed evidence about any person. He could always tell what a person had in them. So what happened back then? As far as Jesus was concerned, God had intended the temple to be a place of reverence and prayer, a sanctuary of mercy and forgiveness, a sacred building that would represent and nourish God's presence among his people. But sadly, the temple had become a symbol of everything that oppressed people, especially the poor. Many temple priests were living a life of luxury, owning land and property and accumulating wealth in tithes and taxes at the expense of the poor. Furthermore, the temple had become an enormous organization of bureaucracy, clericalism and corruption, favoring the powerful priestly families. 
appalled by the abuses playing out before him and indeed behind the whole system, Jesus boldly and courageously interrupted and disrupted the temple activities of buying and selling and the exchange of money and he called for reform. Historically, it was probably a relatively minor incident in some corner of the courtyard of the Gentiles and was over in a matter of minutes, intended more for its prophetic, symbolic value rather than any violent intent, which of course would have been contrary to the way of Jesus. In the dialogue with the Jews that followed, Jesus was adamant that no matter what the violations and abuses of the temple, the presence of God and the work of God among the people could never ever be destroyed and would always rise again. And in the last section, which is really something separate from what has gone before, we're reminded that Jesus was someone with keen perception of people who was not easily seduced by flattery, acclamation or success. One way of entering into this passage is to remember the times when you were shocked disturbed, angry, a righteous anger in discovering that what was meant to be a sanctuary, a safe and a life-giving space, had become something of a market, tarnished and desecrated by marketplace values. Perhaps it was the sanctuary of a human life cheapened by abuse, exploitation or neglect. Or the sanctuary of a generous, loving relationship where expressions of love were meant to be free and spontaneous but had become measured and calculated, determined by what one might get in return. the sanctuary of what was once a vibrant community becoming infiltrated by competition, rivalry, jealousies, begrudgery or malicious gossip. Or the sanctuary of nature being destroyed by pollution, exploitation or damage. Or some noble profession that had lost touch with its original ideals and inspiring values. Or the sanctuary of your own body being threatened by enslavement to any kind of addiction. Remember the surge of indignation that you experienced in the face of such defilement. Feeling overwhelmed, as it were, by zeal for the house. Remember the actions that you were moved to take in order to confront, disturb or disrupt. Overturning tables, scattering the money changers' coins. Remember how you found your voice in it all and you raised your voice in protest. Take all of this out of here and stop turning my father's house into a market.
Remember too your strong conviction that God was on the side of justice and that justice would ultimately prevail and that from the debris something newer, deeper and truer would emerge. Yes, destroy this temple and in three days it will be raised up again. Let the memories come back in all their detail until you can say, I recognize that story. God was in that place and I didn't see it until now. Let the meditation continue in the coming days as you go on your way, as you go about your ordinary everyday activities, let the word of God linger in the background. Keep your eyes and ears open to what's going on around you, what's going on in the wider world, what you read in the newspapers, what you hear about in the news, and you may well be surprised to find the gospel passage living again in all kinds of new situations today. When the time is right for you, you may just feel to pray in your own words thanking the Father for the gift of this passage, for the life experiences that it has reminded you of. Let the Father know what the experience of temple has been for you, the zeal for the house, the disruptive actions, the verbal protest, your own conviction that goodness and truth would prevail. Give thanks to the Father that you can now see that you were playing your part in the work of God. In your own time, you might feel to ask God for forgiveness for the times that you saw sanctuaries being desecrated and turned into markets and you did nothing out of fear of confrontation or rejection. Trusting now in the Father's understanding and mercy, let him know all about your regrets or sorrow. Father, for the gift of righteous anger, zeal for the house in the face of glaring injustices and abuse. Asking the Father for the wisdom to see what is asked of you and for the courage and strength to follow through, to say what needs to be said and to do what needs to be done so that these sanctuaries might be always safeguarded protected and cherished as the Father meant them to be. With a trusting heart, let the presence of our Father God now take over and draw you into a deeper prayer of silence and stillness. of distraction, perhaps you might choose a word or phrase from the passage, for example, 
the Father's house and repeat it in the quiet of your own heart to assist you on this journey into silence and stillness. Stay with this deep prayer for as long as it is given to you. Simply rest your heart trustingly and receptively in the presence of God. of God as you meditate on the way. <laughs> 